Okay, guys, I'm going to check off drop off and coloring. So that's done. Y'all can check it off on your schedule too if you want. We'll wait for everybody to get here. everybody to get here we can read a story because I guess some of us are running a little late today which is okay that happens but we'll read a little book or something while we wait for everybody to get here okay Adeline brought in this book she wanted us to read this one fancy Nancy and the sensational babysitter sensational means like amazing really really good has anybody had a babysitter before have y'all had babysitters yeah okay Yes. Okay. So let's see if this babysitter maybe was kind of like your babysitter. So it's called Fancy Nancy and the Sensational Babysitter. Tonight, our parents are going to the movies. A new babysitter is coming. Her name is Alex, and she's a teenager. I am very excited. I help my sister get into her PJs. I hope she gets to sleep early. Then Alex and I will have a lot of time together. I make an agenda for the evening's activities. Ooh, an agenda is kind of like a schedule. Like, you know how we have our schedule on the board here of what we're going to do today? That's kind of like an agenda. It's what we're going to do. Let's see. An agenda is like a list, only fancier. This evening will be so enjoyable. That's fancy for fun. First, we'll play with my dolls. Then we can play dress up. Or maybe Alex will bring some fashion magazines. We can look through them and pick our favorite ensembles. That's fancy for outfits. Good morning, Aya. Soon I hear my mom calling, come next or come meet Alex, and I run downstairs. I am very confused. In fact, I am stupefied, and that means super duper confused. A teenager is in our living room. A boy teenager. But where is Alex, I ask. I'm Alex, he says. Oh no, this is practically a babysitting tragedy, but I try to be polite. I hold out my hand and say, hello. My sister and Alex are building with her blocks. Alex asked me to come play with them. Instead, I go upstairs to my room. Alex can't help being a boy, but still seeing my agenda makes me a little melancholy, which is fancy for sad. I'm reading a book to my doll, Maribel, when there's a knock on the door. Enter, I say. It's Alex. Your sister is asleep, he says. Wow, you got out of bed so early. And she didn't even cry. He asks if I want to learn to juggle. Woo, yes, I say. We go downstairs, and Alex finds our tennis balls. Woo, la, la. Alex is an expert at juggling. He can keep four balls in the air at once. I try to juggle three. Impossible! Even two is very hard. If you don't believe me, try it yourself. Then I show Alex my hula hoop. Wow, I always wanted to learn to do that, he says. Well, I can teach you, I say. I demonstrate how to hula. Demonstrate is a fancy word for show. 
Not to brag, but I can hula hoop for so long. Alex tries to hula. He looks funny. Still, I try hard not to giggle because that would be very rude. Woo, we both are thirsty now. We need refreshments. I put cookies on a plate. We drink lemonade out of teacups. I remind Alex to keep his pinky up. It's fancier that way. When my parents come home, I tell them, Alex is a sensational babysitter. I hope he comes again soon. Alex turns and bows. Merci, Nancy. That means thank you in French. Oh, so she was kind of upset that um, her babysitter was a boy instead of a girl. She was expecting a girl, but it turns out that she ended up having a lot of fun with him anyway. Okay, I'm gonna clean this book, Adeline, wipe it down, and then I'll bring it, I'll put it in your backpack. Okay, let's go over our schedule today. Let's see here. We checked off drop off and coloring. We're doing morning meeting now. We just need to go over calendar. Then it says journals on our schedule, but we're not doing journals this morning. We're doing something super duper fun instead of journals. I know I already told the kids at school, but do y'all remember what it is at home? I'll give you a hint. Yeah, Charles, do you have a guess? What do you think, Charles? We have to make it with paper. Yes, we're making our torn paper crafts instead of journals today. Fun! So y'all can choose between a spider, a candy corn, and a ghost, right? And your parents will get your supplies ready. Yes, Charles? Um, is it okay if I don't rip in this cut? You don't what? Rip in this cut. Oh, I mean, I guess, but it's really actually really good for our fingers to do ripping. It helps build all the little muscles in our fingers. So I'd rather you rip. And plus the ripping makes it look really cool and gives it awesome texture that you kind of can't get with cutting, okay? All right, let's go ahead and keep going on our schedule. So we're doing our super fun torn paper craft instead of journals today. And then we'll do math and then snack and recess. And then Miss Eccles is gonna come for library. We'll do some foundations. We'll read a book for science, or maybe I can try to get that brain pop working. Then Miss Cornblith will come, then story time, and the kids at school pack up and go home. So there's our schedule today. Good morning, Isley, do you have a question? What do you wanna say? Since I came, very late. I really want to hear the book. Oh, you really want to hear this fancy Nancy book? This one? Okay, how about you sign up for some one on one time? I would love to read you this book, okay? Maybe are we going to I, I, I came after super class? late too, so I missed the book too. Oh, you and Isley, Aya and Isley, y'all could sign up for some one on one time after class today, and I'll read you girls this book. That would be really hey, cool. Mom. Okay. She uh, said think, we could I start. Hey, if you want, just this afternoon, okay? All right, let's head on over to calendar. Oh. Okay, here is the October calendar. There we go. So kids, if it is hard to see uh, right here, like if this is blocking you, you can look up here. Okay. All right. I'm pointing to the month. What month is it, everybody? October. It's October. October. Yay, October. What letter does October start with? Oh. An O. What sound does October start with? An O. Oh, O oh sound. Oh. What letter does October end with? What letter? An R. What sound uh, uh, does October, uh, uh, er, sound October. Do y'all remember the year? Yes. Yeah, you, you can 2020. say 2020 or 2020, either one. Okay, let's figure out the date. Let's see, yesterday was October 6th. What do you think today is? What comes after six? What do y'all think? Or think seven. Let's count, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, y'all are right. But what shape is it? We've got a pattern. We have a Halloween pattern. Oh, Vina thinks pumpkin. It's yeah, pumpkin. You think pumpkin? Okay, let's do our pattern just to make sure. Pumpkin, ghost, witch. Pumpkin, 
Pumpkin is right. So pumpkin is right. Here is my pumpkin number seven. There's the pumpkin number seven. Okay, I'll put it right there and let's figure out that day of the week. We point to the date and we go up, up, up. It starts with a W and W makes a wah, wah sound. So the day of the week is Wednesday. I'm gonna put my arrow down from Tuesday to Wednesday with the W. There we go. Let's go over the fun things on our calendar here. Let's see. On Saturday, we have a half moon, which means we'll only be able to see half of the moon lit up by the sun on Saturday. Then on Monday, we have no school for Indigenous Peoples Day. Remember, we learned about Indigenous Peoples Day with Miss Eccles in library, and we'll talk a little more about that tomorrow. Then we've got Vina's birthday on this day. And then we have a new moon, which means it'll be really hard to see the moon on this night because none of it will be lit up by the sun. Let's see. We've got Wanda visiting the classroom on this day. We've got another when's birthday. birthday. When's Vina's birthday after this the other birthday day? birthday is on October 15th. October okay. 15th is Vina's birthday. Then on this day, you get to wear your Halloween costumes during the day. Yay! Yay! That's so and then this exciting. day is Halloween and a full moon. We have Halloween and a full moon on the same day. Super cool. There we go. Should we count how many more hey, minutes of Halloween? Hey, you put the full moon rising from the Halloween picture. Yeah, that's okay. Let's count how many more days until Halloween. That's funny. Okay, so remember, we're going to wear our costumes on this day to school, but that's because Halloween is on a Saturday. We won't see each other on Saturday, so that's why we're going to celebrate this day. But let's count how many more days till Halloween, okay? Let's Wait, see. One, two, three, three four, four, five, five, six, six. So we only see half of it, the half moon. And then next week, it looks like we have crescent moons until we get to a new moon, which we'll barely be able to see it at all. And then it gets a little bit bigger, 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 until we have a full moon on Halloween. All right, Charles, what did you want to say? 
Charles, do you want to unmute I yourself? I want to say that. You know how it starts at the full moon? Yes. And it ends at a full moon. Yes, it has, you're, you're so right. I think every month it starts at... I think um, at the starting of the month and the ending of the month, there's a full moon. Ooh. And I want to say that there's not only like full moon, half moon, and new moon. There's like little like this, 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 this. Yes, there's lots of in between, right? There's lots of in between. Yes. All right, let's do our day of school. We filled up a new row yesterday. We filled up our one, two, third row yesterday. Yesterday was our 30th day of school. So we gotta start here. Look, we're in the ones row. All the numbers here have a one at the end. What do you think today's gonna be? We've got, let's start from 25. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 30, one, 31, very good. What two numbers are in 31? A three and a one, awesome. Three and a one, wonderful. So today is the first day of our one, two, three, fourth row. Okay, everybody, let's do some checking off on our schedule. I am very excited about what we're doing next. Let's see. I am going to check off morning meeting. Next on our schedule is journals, but we decided that instead of journals today, we're going to do a fun Halloween craft. So if you chose to do the spider, okay, let me show you how you're going to do the spider real fast. Okay, if you chose how to, do, if you chose the spider, you're going to need really any color background. And maybe your parents can like draw a spider on there. You're going to need a glue stick. Now, I'm going to give you a very important pointer. When you tear the paper, okay, when you tear the paper, don't put the glue on the paper because you're going to end up accidentally getting glue all over your fingers and it's going to be a mess. Okay, so put she's the glue no, she's teaching me the, spider. On the paper here and then glue your black paper on it. Okay, just a little tip. We're going to tear it, not cut it. So we're going to tear the paper, not cut it, because the whole point of this is tearing is really good exercise for our fingers. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm going to give you a little another pointer. When you're tearing your paper, this paper size, that's a little bit too big. That's a little bit too big. I'm gonna give you another little pointer. This paper size is too tiny. Something in between would be perfect. Something kind of like that size. That's a good size, all right? So when you're tearing, this, too big. This, too tiny. Something about like this, perfect. All right. This size. Perfect, Aya, wonderful. And then you just glue them all over. All right. I'm you, doing my ghost. Nice. If you are doing the ghost, maybe your paper kind of looks like this. You're doing the ghost. Um, you need to draw the eyes on the ghost. Well, not, oh, oh, you're talking to your mom, okay. Then you're gonna need some white paper. So let's see, I'm gonna put some glue on my ghost. I'll do that part first. And I'm gonna start tearing my paper. Let's see, is this a good size? No, that's too big. Okay, let me try again. Is this good? No, no too tiny. Let me try again. What about this? Yeah, that's good. And then I'll put it right there. So the cool thing about the torn paper crafts, you can overlap them a little bit. Like you can tear your paper and put it over the other white paper a little bit. It looks really good. All right, let me show you the candy corn real fast and then we'll get started in the classroom. If you chose to do the candy corn, your paper is gonna look a little bit like this and you're gonna get white, 
you're gonna get yellow and you're gonna get orange all right and the white goes at the top so let's see i'll put a little glue there and i'll start tearing my white paper there we go and you're gonna fill all that up with white you're gonna fill all this up with yellow and you're gonna fill all that up with orange all right okay everybody if you're at home go ahead and get started have fun and if you're in the classroom we'll go wheeler quietly raise your hand if you need anything and if you're in the classroom we're gonna start passing out your paper so you're gonna need a glue stick just can't see she's you're gonna need paper and you're gonna need your fingers but you won't need scissors that's great aya yes wheeler what do you need on the left I saw that. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I, no, I want to see the sheets of it. We're doing a good job at ripping, sweetie. Mm -hmm. I think I'm good exercise for your fingers. That's what part of this ex this project. Yeah. Oh, good. Candy corn, which one do you want to do, Harrison? The ghost? Okay. Is Randy? Yeah. Is this a good size paper? Yeah, that's wonderful. I'm doing my little ghost. Okay. Okay. Well, close that. Mm. If you want to come down here on your knees, it might be easier too. It's fun. Let me know if you need help, okay? Sweet. Sweet. Okay, what'd you ask me, Aya? Am I paused? No. You just fine? You're paused. I'm paused. Uh oh. I don't know why. It might be our internet. Oh, no, you're not. Okay, good. Oh, great. Now you're paused again. Oh, no. Okay, now you're not. <laughs> oh, the kids are paused. Wonderful, Adeline. 
Yes, I know. Your hands are gonna get a little sticky with glue. That's okay. Creative, Charles. Very nice. Somebody's here to help. Sure. Oh, it's looking good, sweetie. Um, How's oh, everybody okay. doing at home? Is it going okay? Look what I did. Look what I did, Miss Van Brandy. Oh, nice. Do y'all see Aya's ghost here? There's Aya. She's got the edge done. Very good. Great job so far. Oh, wonderful. And is this Finn Spider? Oh my gosh, I love it. Ford's doing a spider too. You can see Ford's working on his spider. Good job, Finn. Catherine, I love your ghost. Oh my gosh, awesome. These are looking so good. <laughs> Me and Captain and Laura are doing so Yeah. Is Vandy? Is this a small enough piece yeah. of paper? Yeah, definitely. That well. looks wonderful. That looks like a great piece of paper. Finn, you have a question or something you want to say? What did the candy one look like? The candy corn? Let me show you a picture. The candy corn one looked like this. Ooh, okay. And I guess if you're at home and you already finished yours, you could do another one if you have enough construction paper. And if your I parents say it's okay. Wanted to, I want to do the candy corn? The ghost. Ooh, the ghost. Let me show you the ghost then. So the ghost kind of looks Ooh. like this. 
You could do yours a little bit different if you wanted to, but this is how we did our ghosts. The ghosts are good because you really just need black paper and white paper. So they're pretty easy to prepare. All right. Let's do Could you please show me the ghost picture again? Sure. Here's the ghost. Okay, so. Here, I can turn this around and then y'all can see them. Thanks. Let me 
me? I'll write it down in just a minute, but I'm a little busy right now. Almost done. Knock, knock. 
Who's there? Cookie. Cookie who? Cookie got a bite chicken out of it. He tied, and it was feeling crummy, and it needed to go to the hospital. <laughs> I didn't know that one. When you yeah. said cookie, I saw that coming up. I have a joke for you. Why did the dinosaur cross the road? I don't know. Because the chicken wasn't born yet. <laughs> Remember the time when I was at my dad's and I was Ghost playing with my Play-Doh in the car the and I was like, oh, I win. I did. Remember that? Yeah. No, but I'm going to do something with this one. Me, I'm dead. Ah, <laughs> uh, scissors is going to catch me. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Oh, I'm not defeated yet. Oh, I'm totally defeated. Hey, Aya. Ah, oh, the blue is going to glue me to the pet. Aya. Yes? Yeah, maybe we can put it Okay, one second, Aya and Isley. One second, Charles has a question. So Charles has a question, Aya and Isley. So one second, I'm gonna mute you for a second. Okay, Charles, what was your question? Oh, you wanted to show us your ghost. Looking good, very and now, good. And now I have to make the candy corn and the spider. You're gonna do the candy corn and the spider? Oh my gosh, your fingers are gonna be so strong. They're gonna be super strong, Charles. I'm gonna join the joke fun. Okay, I will unmute Isley and Aya, and y'all can tell jokes while we're working. <laughs> hey, Isley. Yeah. Let's pretend that the Why do sharks that... swim in salt water? Because they need to breathe salt water. No, because pepper water makes them sneeze. Now do you have a joke for me? Well, Aya, I think that you should pretend. I have a joke. Let's pretend that the orange, like, let's pretend that the scissors are trying to attack the orange. What? Let's pretend that the scissors are trying to attack the orange. I think only uh, uh, I'm going to attack you, squish you into juice. How they're guessing about the orange scissors. That says I'm getting closer to you. Oh. And I'm dead. <laughs> I'm so close to you. I'm getting closer. I'm you. I win. I'm dead. You are dead, right? I'm a go. Yes. Um, what do you call a blow that sits in the middle of a tennis court? I don't know. Yeah, what do you call that? A net, because a net is a blow name, and a net cuts a tennis net. Cool. The Aya. Yes. Yes, Sarsley. Did you know that I'm allergic to cookies and my last name is Jenny? Did you know you're allergic? Did, you, did I know that you're allergic to what? Did you know that I'm allergic to gluten? Gluten? I, am a, I do not eat gluten, but I am not, I am not gluten. I cannot eat I am not gluten either, but I can still eat. I think I can still eat that type of food. Oh, you don't eat gluten not either? To gluten. Ooh. So, Aya, 
Yes. Did you know my middle name is Annika? Isn't that Annika? A name? Yep, Isley Annika Jenny. Isley Annika Jenny. Yes. That's cool. I love it. What's your name? What's your full name? My name is Isla Imani Domenico Joseph. I am Akimani Domenico Joseph. No, Isla Imani Domenico Joseph. I am Akimani Joseph. Yes, Isla Imani Domenico Joseph. Okay, are you everybody, allergic to we are still working on our torn paper no. crafts in the like classroom. It. Catherine, yours looks wonderful. And it looks like some of you are still working on them at home, too. So we are going to, let's see, we've got a, just a couple minutes for math. Let's see. I bet we can squeeze in a little bit of math before we have a break. Maybe we won't get to do all of it, but we'll squeeze in a little bit. Okay, if you're still working on your torn paper craft, that's okay. You can keep on working on it, okay? And we'll catch up with math later if you want to. Maybe you could do math during the break. Okay, so we're going to do some math together, but if you're still working on your torn paper craft, that's okay. You can keep working on it and you could maybe catch up with the math on the break. Okay, I'm gonna check off journal, even though we did that super fun torn paper craft during journal time. I can work on it later. I'm ready for a mess. So we're gonna get out our orange, our dark orange math textbooks dark orange math textbooks. But remember, if you're still doing your craft, your Halloween craft, that's okay. We can do catch up with math in the break. And you can keep working on your torn paper Halloween craft. Okay, so in your dark orange math textbooks, we're gonna turn to page 42, it's a four and a two. Page 42 is a four and a two. And it looks like this. Okay, that's fine. And you can put it off to dry on the side, okay? It looks wonderful, Ford. All right, and it looks like we are reading a graph. Do you remember earlier this year in August when we did graphs and charts? It looks like we're reading a graph. Okay, I'm going to give everybody just a minute to find this page. I'm going to help the kids in class find this page, and I'll be right back. Make sure you have a pencil out. I'm not going to write. I'm not going to write. Okay. I'll put it to the right one. 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 Five. Two. Four. One. Two. Four. One. Five. Two. Four. All right, everybody. Two. Four. So on page forty-two, let's see. The directions say, "Look and answer the questions." So we're going to look at this graph and then we're going to answer the questions down here. What is this graph? What is it showing? What is it graphing? The numbers. It looks like maybe fruits. Fruit. It looks like different fruits, doesn't it? And the title of the graph says Apple, favorite orange, fruits. mango, and peach. Favorite fruits is the title of the graph. Okay, so it looks like they're graphing mango fruits. And peach. Mango and peach. Yes, it looks like there's mangoes, maybe, or peaches. Maybe those are papayas. Maybe those are oranges and apples. Let's see. Maybe, those, maybe the yellow things are mangoes. Maybe those are mangoes, yeah. We'll say those are mangoes and maybe these are peaches. 
So I'm going to use a black crayon so y'all can see really well, but you all use pencil. Okay. So first question says, how many peaches? And look, here are the peaches. Okay, one, let's see. Let's count them. One, two, three, four. There's four. So let's write a four in that box. So write a four in that box. Colin, did you write it's a It's just down two? and then just slide over on the plane line and then just down again. Yep. Colin, did you write a four for the peaches? Get your pencil out. All right, now the second question says, how many, maybe those are oranges? How many oranges? You can look, you can look right up there, look. See? Let's see, let's count the oranges. One, two, three, four, five. Five oranges, okay. Yeah, and Catherine was showing us five fingers for five oranges. Okay, let's do our little rhyme for five. Start at the top, go back, down, and around. And that's a little rhyme to help us remember how to write a number five. Okay, let's see the next question. I think these are papayas. It says, how many papayas? Let's count them on our graph. How many are there? There's one, two. Oh, Weaver, it looks beautiful. There's two. So let's write a number two. There we go. Wow, Wheeler looks so good. And you already have your math book out. Great job, Wheeler. Wonderful Ford. All right, and then the very last question says, how many apples? Looks like those are green apples and there's just one. Just one. So I want us to look at our graph and let's answer some questions about our graph. What is there the most of? What fruit is the there? Oranges. The oranges, because five is the biggest number. What fruit is the least favorite? What is there the fewest of? One. One. The apple, because there's only yeah, there's one so apple. So there's the most oranges, number five, and there's the least apples, number one. Okay, all right, nice job with math. That's all the math we have time for today. But that was good, we got some number writing practice in. Nice work, Aya. Okay, so we're gonna close our math books. Make sure your math books are back where they belong. Make sure your pencils are back where they belong. And let's check off our schedule. Let's do some checking off. We're gonna check off math. And next on our schedule is snack and recess for the kids at home, or for the kids at school. And then the kids at home, y'all have a break. When we get back from our break, we're gonna be doing library. And Miss Eccles is gonna be here for library and she uses my Zoom, my computer in the classroom. So you can stay in this Zoom if you want, okay? I had a lot of fun with y'all this morning doing these questions. Uh, That's great. Bye. We'll see you after the break. We'll see you for library after the break. Bye, 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 bye,
Can I read it?
it's going to remove the very corner. I'm going to do a challenge while you're waiting. Yes! You do I did the twirl challenge. Twirls. How many twirls can you do? Oh. You doing? Okay. You can. All right. Those are big circles. 
Finn is here today too. Hi, Finn. Good to see you. Oh, let's go. Got to share content. Now, my friends who are in the classroom, do we prefer having the lights on or do we like to turn the lights off? Wow. Keep them off. All right. So my electrician this week, is it Vina? Thank you, Vina, for being the electrician. Okay, now friends are at home, you should be able to see my screen. If you can see my screen, friends who are at home, can you give me a thumbs up? And I'm gonna try to change the view here so that I can see all of you guys. Here we go. There we go, so now you guys are in the corner here. If you're at home, can you see my screen? If that answer is a yes, give me a thumbs up. I see Charles, I see Finn giving me a thumbs up. If you're in Miss Vander Indy's room and you can see the screen, give me a thumbs up. <gasps> Elliot, so giving me a thumbs up. Ford, Harrison. All right, here is our plan for today. Today we're gonna start with a question. Then we are gonna have another meet the author moment. We're gonna do our short little mystery word game to figure out the mystery title of our book. We're gonna read our book and finish with actually a little activity. If we have time, we might have more Play-Doh time because I really love seeing what you guys created. So if we are at home and we want to do Play-Doh, we might want to think about going and finding our Play-Doh. So that's our plan for today. So our kind of check-in question is, when you need help with something in your family, who do you usually ask for help? If you have an answer, you may raise your hand. When you need something, who do you ask for help? All right, I'm gonna start with Ford. Mom and dad. You ask for mom and ha dad. And can you think of an example of something you asked them? Ford? Uh, oh, could you say that a little bit louder? Oh. So Ford shared that he asked his mom and dad um, to help him when his brother took his toy. All right, I see Elliot raising a hand right there. Elliot, who do you ask for help? A teacher if you're at school. Mm -hmm. Like if we're the lessons when the playground gets the Ah, so Elliot's talking about at school when Elliot needs help. Elliot knows that they can ask Miss Vanderendy or the other teacher if they're out on the playground. Thanks for sharing that. All right, Adeline's raising her hand. Oh, Adeline says you can ask a nanny for help. Vina is raising her hand. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for friends at home who maybe couldn't hear Vina's answer, she was saying you can ask adults for help. If you're at home, they might be your grown-ups, at teacher or at school, it might be teachers, and you can tell them and ask them if something is wrong and you need their help. All right, I want to make sure I didn't miss any hands on this side of the room or any hands at home. Are there any hands up at home? No? All right, so we will keep Hi. moving on. Oh, your hands up. I'm so sorry, Harrison. Who do you ask for help? You ask your uncle for help. Can you think of something you've asked your uncle? He says he can't remember right now, but that's who he asks for help. Oh, Colin's hand is up. Hey, Colin, please pull your mask, or your mask up, up over your nose to keep you safe. Thanks, friend. Yes, Colin. Okay, Colin says you can ask a grandpa or grandma for help too. Is your hand back up, Ford? Yes, Ford. Mm hmm. What is it? 
Oh, yeah. So Ford says if something happens and you're hurt, you can ask your grown-ups for help about that, which is a great and point. Oh, I'm sorry that that happened. So friends, our author today, her name is Cynthia Lydic smith and she is a member of the Muscogee Creek Nation. So we are reading Native American stories this week, and we have a new one today. And when we were here on Monday, we read a story from a man who was part of the Seminole Nation. And what did we read about on Monday? It was a type of food that was very special to his family. Does anybody remember what it's called at home or in class? Ooh, I hear it from the classroom. Adeline, can you say it, or Adeline, can you say it nice and loud for me, please? Fry bread. Fry bread, that's right. If you pay attention in today's story, you might spot it again. This story is going to be about a different Native American tradition, and that's actually our mystery word for today. But before we read the book, I just wanted to let you know a couple things about our author. She lives in Austin, Texas, but she is actually, um, here she is when she is little. This is her when she's five years old, and she describes herself as a picture book reader and a library kid. I can't see her. You can't see her? Okay, maybe I'll stop, share my screen, and reshare. Maybe it got, it clicked out. Hold on. Let me see if I can fix it for you. Thank you for letting me know that. Usually this fixes it. Oh, that's a picture of me, I think. I don't know how to take it off, actually. I hope so. I'm having a, I have been having a day with the technology. All right, did that help friends at home? Okay, great, glad to hear it. So this is her when she's five years old. She loves picture books and libraries. You can nod your head or give me a thumbs up if you also feel like you're a picture book reader and a library kid. I see Birdie's nodding her head. I see Ford giving some thumbs up. I'm giving some thumbs up because I'm definitely a picture book reader. Wheeler's got his hand up. Yes, you can ask a grown up for something if you needed help. You guys are going to see why this is the first question I ask you all when I read the story. Elliot's hands up. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so this is her picture, and then this right here is, looks like what? It looks mostly like, what do we call a rise in the ground? A park. A park? A hill. So this is a hill, but you could also call it a mound. This is the mound building, and this is where the Muscogee people have their government. That's where they make their rules for their nation, for their people. So that's why I included it right here. Now we're gonna do our little game, Owl. So remember, this is our mystery word game. We're gonna be kind to each other. If we don't get a letter on our first try, that's okay. We're gonna raise our hand if we want to get the letter. And we're going to try to make sure everybody gets a turn before we take second turns. Yes, Birdie, I see your hand up. Yeah. Oh, Birdie's ready to guess the letter. Okay, Birdie, you are on it. I'm going to switch over. Now, you guys can see I gave you a little bit of help here because I don't want to take too much. Time. The last three letters of our word are C-E-R. And this is a tradition. All right, B. Freddie, can you tell me a letter that starts with B? Board. Board. All right. This is a C E R. There's not a B today. All right. I see some more hands up. Oh, I did. See? That's the little owl ear right there. Here, I'll pull this forward. Maybe this will help you see a little bit better. All right, I see Venus hand no, up. One of the letters. That's not C E R. Hey, Venus is A. Guess what, guys? There is an A. It's right here. Here's your A. All right, checking on friends at home. Would anyone friends at home like to guess the letter? I got help from Birdie a minute ago. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go to Harrison. Another C, there's only one C in this word. So would you like to guess a new letter? You could also say, please come back to me. All right, we will come back to you. Wheeler. A D, can you give me a word that starts with the letter D? Dog or door. Hey, Colin, I need you to put your mask up over your nose and mouth to keep everyone safe. Guess what? Wheeler, there is a D. Friends, we are down to just one letter. Yes, sir. Which one? Okay, would anybody like to raise what? their hand? Checking on friends at home who have not guessed yet. Okay, I'm going to go to Finn. Would you like to guess the letter, Finn? It's I. All right, you're guessing I. Can you tell me a word that starts with the letter I? Any ideas? What is something that's really, really cold and it's like solid water? That word starts with an I. Solid water. You know that is. Solid water. What is it? Another name and it's cold it? and you might put it in your drink to cool it off. Ice. Ice. Yes. So I as an ice. I'm sorry, friend. I is such a great letter, but it's not our last mystery letter. Okay. Hey, Charles, I noticed that your hand was up. Would you like to guess a letter? Oh, you didn't draw another part of the mystery. You are so right, Aya. Thank you for catching my mistake. Here's another part of the mystery, Al. All right, coming back to you, Charles. N. N. Can you give me a word that starts with the letter N, please? Nuts. Nuts. Okay, guess what? We have, as a team, in the classroom and at home solved this mystery puzzle. I didn't get to... You do. You all work together. Get a hard time. So Charles, what is the word? Can you say the word? Yes, uh... Oh, hey friends in the classroom. I'm not sure you heard Charles because I heard some background noise. Charles, say it one more time. Solve the puzzle. Yes, Dancer, yes. yes. So the title of our book today is Jingle Dancer. Okay, so I'm gonna think that I have a dream. So that we can see the book, because it's an actual book, book today. Careful, Charles, that table's not that heavy. Beckles. Oh, yes, I am. I didn't have a turn the gas. You didn't know which letter to guess? That's okay. I am just grateful. Oh, I said I didn't there. have a turn the guess. Oh, you didn't have a turn. So, hey, friends, I'll ask you a question. Do you like this mystery word game? Yes. Okay, so I'll try to bring it back and I will make a note, Aya, to make sure you get a chance to guess. Okay. I'm so is, sorry. Is there a claw in here? So we will try again next time. Thank you guys for making space for other friends to have a turn. That's why I wanted to make sure nobody got two turns before we gave as many turns as possible to new friends. Yes, Wheeler. It's a library. Oh, you're sad for me that I don't library. win. Feeler, that is such a kind thing to say. I get a break. Thank you for worrying about me. But you know what? It honestly makes me really happy that you all win because that tells me that you're working together and you're working on learning your letters and sharing in that experience. Um, Birdie, is your hand up? What? Story time. And then what? Great. Another white. You what? And then after like another white. Okay. I'm so sorry. I think there's some background noise. So I think there's some background noise. So I would you say that one more time? Thank you for being patient. I did not get a little white. Oh, but you did get a chance to guess. This is just something. It's a game to play just for fun. And I love that we were being kind to yourself, even if we don't get the letter right the first time. All right, so this is Jingle Dancer, and you are going to see something really cool about this book. Somebody has written in this book. This is actually autographed by the author. She came to our school a while ago, so it says St. Francis right here, and she signed the book herself. So this book is a one-of-a-kind book for St. Francis. 
here's how this story starts. Tink, 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 sang cone-shaped jingles sewn to Grandma Wolf's dress. Every grandma bounced step brought clattering tinks that light blurred against silvers and jingles of tin. Jenna was sitting here daydreaming at the kitchen table. She was tasting the delicious honey on, what do you think she might be eating? Ooh, but remember the book we read on Monday? Adeline? Fry bread. She was eating honey on her fry bread. Her heart was beating to the brum, brum, brum of the powwow drum. So that is when her family gets together to dance together. It's a special dance that they do. It's their tradition. As Moon kissed Sun goodnight, Jenna shifted her head on her grandma's shoulder. I want to jingle dance too. Next powwow, said her grandmother, you could dance. Grandma answered but we don't have enough time to order you jingles for your dress. Again and again, Jenna watched the, on the TV, the movie of her Grandma Wolf jingle dancing. When Grandma bounced up on TV, Jenna, you can see her in her living room, would bounce up following right along. But Jenna's dress would not be able to sing it would not have the four rows of jingles that she needed. How do you guys think that made her feel? Sad, that's right. As sun fetched morning, Jenna danced east to her great aunt Sis's porch. Jenna's bounce steps crunched in the autumn leaves, but there were no jingles in her steps. Here's some pull your mask right up over your nose, please. Thank you. Once again, Great Aunt Sis told Jenna a story about bats. It was a Muskogee Creek story. Although all the other animals told that you're too small to make a difference, bats still won their game by flying high in the air and catching the ball with his teeth. The rising sunlight reached through the window and flashed against, whoa, what is hanging on Aunt this is bedroom window and I'm getting it close so you can see it. It's the dress, jingles on a dress that was long too quiet. So Jenna needs help, right? So what do you think she's gonna do? Okay, so some of us are saying she might just take the jingles off the dress. Would that be respectful to her aunt? No, what can she do instead of just grab the jingles off her dress? Ah, our friends in the classroom are saying ask, exactly. So she's going to ask her grown up here for help. May I borrow enough jingles to make a row, Jenna asked. She didn't want to take so many that her aunt Sis's dress would lose its jingling voice. You may, yes, said her aunt Sis. She rubbed her legs. My legs don't work so good anymore. Will you dance for me? I will, said Jenna, and with a kiss on her aunt Sis's cheek. Now Jenna's dress needed three more rows. As sun got to mid circle, so when the sun is in the middle of the sky, it's noon or lunchtime, Jenna went to Mrs. Scott's brand new house. At Jenna's side, her jingles were clinking, so they were jingling, jingling. Mrs. Scott led Jenna through the kitchen. Once again, Jenna rolled the dough and Mrs. Scott fried it. And she, what do you think she's gonna ask? What does she I need? Fry bread. Yes, you do, she's making fry bread, that's right. But she needs something, what does she need, guys? The jingles, right? Yeah, so she says, may I borrow just enough jingles to make a row? Jenna asked, not wanting to take so many that Mrs. Scott's dress would lose its voice. You may, said Mrs. Scott. At the powwow, I'll be so busy selling fry bread and Indian tacos. Will you please dance for me? I will, I will, said Jenna with a high five. Now Jenna's dress needed two more rows. 
Jenna caught a glimpse of the moon, so that means it's evening. Jenna went to her cousin's apartment. Now let's look at her cousin Elizabeth right here. Where do you think she's coming home from? A house maybe? Looks like she's dressed up in a business suit. She's got a bag, she's got papers. What might she have spent her day doing? Raise your hand if you think you know. I see Wheeler's hand. That's right, as she came home from work, Jenna helped by carrying her papers for her files. Jenna asked, may I borrow enough jingles to make a row? Jenna didn't want to take so many from Elizabeth's dress that it would lose its voice. You may, said Elizabeth, burrowing through her messy closet for the jingle dress. This weekend, I'm working on a big case and I can't go to the powwow. But will you please dance for me? I will, said Jenna, and she clasped her cousin's hand. So clasp means she held her cousin's hand. Now Jenna's dress needed just one more row of jingles, but she didn't know which way to turn. Moon what do, you, what do you mean a row of jingles? So in her dress, see here's the dress. It traditionally has four rows of jingles. Jenna had the dress, but she did not have any of the jingles that the dancers wear for this tradition, for this ceremony. So she's been borrowing them from women in her family. She's got three, but she doesn't know who else to go to. And she needs one more row of jingles for her dress. So if the moon is out, what time of day is it? Night, Night that's right. So Jenna went north to her grandma Wolf's house. That's right where she started. At Jenna's side, her jingles were silent. So that tells us she's moving or she's not moving. Not moving. not moving. Thanks for checking in with me. And high above, the clouds were wavering like worried ghosts. When Jenna tugged the door open, the jingles sang, tink, tink, tink. Grandma was jingle dancing on TV again. Jenna breathed in every hey ah, ho oh of the powwow song. Her heart was beating brum, 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 brum to the sound of the pounding drum. On the family room carpet, she saw that a pair of beaded moccasins, right here, you can see them in the picture, were waiting for her. She slipped them on and she remembered that not long ago, these moccasins had been dancing with her grandma wolf. Now she knew where to get her fourth row. Now friends, who do you think in this story she's going to ask? Yes, of course that's her grandma. So she says, may I borrow enough jingles to make a row? Jenna didn't want to take so many that her grandma's dress would lose its voice. You may, said her grandma. Now Jenna's dress could sing. And here you can see they're sitting together sewing the jingles to Jenna's dress. Every night they work together on it. And every night Jenna practiced her bounce steps. Now here we are at the powwow. Brum, brum, brum sounded the drum at the powwow next weekend as light blurred silver Jenna jingle danced. For great aunt sis who couldn't dance because her legs ached. For Mrs. Scott who sold the fry bread. For Elizabeth who was working on her case. And for her grandma wolf who warmed like the sun. Tink. Tink, tink. And that is the end of this book. So just a quick check in about this story. Think about where Jenna is, the clothes she's wearing, the place that she is. Do you think this story happened recently? So closer to right now or a long time ago? So long time no, ago. A lot, a lot of us are saying a long time ago, but look again, she's looking at a TV. We see cars on the street. Not a long time ago. Yeah, I just wanted to emphasize this because this is a tradition that people still take part of today. So people who are in the Muskegee Creek Nation or the Ojibwe Nation will still, you can find them jingle dancing. So this is a current story about something that people do to celebrate their family and their traditions. 
Let's see. We have just a few minutes left, probably not enough to get out Plato, but I do want to check in with you all and ask, are there any traditions that you and your family do together that you they maybe even help you with? We talked about some oh, food last time, and I'll turn around so we can see our friends in the classroom. Any traditions? Uh, no. So in my family, one thing we do is we play the game croquet out in the lawn. So croquet has, is kind of like golf, and you have these mallets, and you have to get them through these arches called wickets. That's something that we do together. Any other things? Are there any other foods we didn't talk about last week? What do you think, Adeline? Thanks for raising your hand. Oh, right. Is there a type of cookie that you all make together? Chocolate. Chocolate chip. Ooh, chocolate chip cookies. All right. Wheeler's got his hand up. Oh, your family makes cinnamon bread? Uh -oh. oh, cinnamon rolls. And is there a special time of year you do it or just kind of whenever they sound tasty? Pretty much whenever they sound tasty. That's awesome. What about my friends at home? Any other special foods you all eat or make together? Birdie says no. Okay, fourth hand is up. Oh, cheeseburgers? Do you make them at home or do you go get them somewhere? No. Oh, so Ford's special family food is cheeseburgers that they eat together. Every Friday night. Oh, every Friday night. What a fun tradition. All right, Colin's hand is up. I'll move so we can see Colin. Oh, 